Well, it is my privilege to introduce our guest today. She is a graduate of this university in 2011 with a degree in biochemistry. Okay, okay, we got some chemists, okay. All right, and then uh, she started working as a scientist for the county, but she switched gears and went into acting, and she's actually in the feature film Searching, which came out this August, I think, right? Okay, help me welcome Michelle Law. Hi. <laughs> well, Michelle, I don't think your story is the typical story, okay? You graduated with biochemistry degree. Again, you work as a scientist. Help us understand how you transitioned to acting and what did that look like for you? What is your story? <sighs> um. I'm so nervous to be back here and speaking. It's crazy. Um, We're so glad I you're studied, here. <laughs> thanks. I studied biochemistry in Bardwell before the new science building was built, but I was pre-med in college. Um, I thought God was calling me to be a doctor. Yeah. But after the earthquake in 2010 in Haiti, um, my father and I flew out, and we did relief work the week after, mm. and I was... My eyes were open to um, just a lack of clean water yeah. in impoverished areas. So yeah. my senior year, I did a thesis on water, and that just made me think, okay, maybe I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I'll be a water scientist. So then I did. Um, mm -hmm. I studied water chemistry, and I worked in wastewater, so poop. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I did that for three and a half years. I transitioned into acting actually quite randomly and the week after I got married. Um, the week after I got married, I told my husband, I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know why, I just want to try acting. Yeah. He said, you sound crazy. Um, I bought a Groupon for an acting class. Yeah. And true story, $99 for five classes. <laughs> and that's when... Um, I fell in love. I caught the bug. I realized that acting is about um, putting yourself in someone else's shoes and trying to understand them and practice mm. compassion towards someone who might have had experiences that you never had. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing some thank of that. You. Well, you know, what is, um, how has Biola helped shape your life after college? I was telling Mike earlier this morning that yeah. this is such a special place to me, like just coming I Ubered here. Just coming here just made me like teary-eyed because it's such a place of formation. It's a place of character development, mm. um, just a place that really encourages fostering meaningful relationships. I made some of the best friends I ever made in my life here. Mm -hmm. um, but what it really prepared me for was actually the Bible classes. I yeah. still remember so much. Um, that I learned in those classes, but just getting a, a foundation on God's word and understanding who he is, yeah. that stuck with me. That stuck with me through two vastly different careers. Mm -hmm. And I feel prepared to live life, whatever I do, like honor and glorify him yeah. because I know my purpose. I know that God bought my life with a price. Mm. And so... I guess I can't thank Biola enough for being a place where I learned that. Great, great. Well, for, for, uh, for me, uh, my question for you is like, how does it, how, what is it like to be a Christian in Hollywood? What is it like to have <laughs> faith in that space? It's so funny. I get this question a lot, and I think it's a valid question. How do we best represent Christ in a place that we know is broken and so um, needing of of God. I guess the honest answer is that I'm still learning how to navigate this. But what I can say is the way that I imagine being a Christian in Hollywood is just how I imagine being a Christian in the world, yeah. which is representing Christ, being salt and light among people who don't know him and who don't know of the love and grace that he offers us. Yeah. Um, 
Well, was, did you have a second? No, I love that. I love that. It's basically you're saying you're you're going to be a Christian as an actor, mm-hmm. just like you're going to be a Christian as a poop scientist. Exactly. Right? I mean, I had to think of these questions too as I was working in the lab. Like, oh, there I'm working with 78 scientists who definitely don't believe in God. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think it's just a matter of living with integrity, um, obeying His word living righteously and living with a purpose that he has called us for, not our own. Yeah, great. Well, so then uh, help us understand what is it like to be an actor in Hollywood? What are some of the ups and downs that you face? So I don't think any words can quite describe the journey. Even to say that it's really, really hard is inadequate Mm. of an explanation, but I would say the journey is very narrow. It's uphill. Hmm. It's very steep. There's a lot of obstacles in the way. Yeah. But most of all, it it feels isolating. Hmm. I think that's the biggest challenge is that no experience, you can compare yourself, but no experience is quite like your own. So mm-hmm. that, and also nobody really sees how much work you put into it. They just see how glamorous and wonderful everything is when you do book. Yeah. But it's such a tumultuous journey getting to the place where you can actually do what you love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, Searching came out in August, okay? August is kind of like Asian movie yeah. month, kind of, right? Because we had Crazy Rich Asians, okay? <laughs> we also had on Netflix, uh, To All the Boys I've Loved, okay? That's right, okay? And then we've got, we've got Searching. Searching, come That's on, right, Searching, searching okay? All right, oh, okay. so we had three pretty major feature films releasing with a predominantly Asian cast. Mm-hmm. Why is it so important for Asians to be represented in the media? You know, this is a question I've only recently just really been having to wrap my mind around with all the interviews I've been doing and um, being someone that people look to for this answer. And I think about it and I just think that we intuitively know that media has such a big impact on how we view our world. The big screen is a reflection of, it reflects back to us and tells us about what society is and it tells us what to believe. And if that's the case, well, let's look at our society. Our society is diverse and America is diverse. Our global community is diverse. Our stories are diverse. Yeah. And God's kingdom is diverse. Yeah. And I think that diversity is important to reflect in media because it allows us to learn from each other and yeah. grow together. Yeah. And also as Christians, I think we should totally promote diversity because If our identity is in Christ, and that's at the forefront of who we are, then our cultural differences come second to our unity in Christ. So that's something that I learned first at Biola and just have continued to witness in my life, is that this is the most relevant good news that we can bring to our culture and society is that, hey, it's okay if we're different culturally. I mean, our cultural identities are important to who we are. And our stories are important, but you know, Christ has covered us all, and we're united in that. So. All right, all right. Well, there you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're gonna call a time out here, and we're gonna invite our worship team to lead us in a reflection song. Okay. And with the reflection song, we're gonna invite you guys to text in social media and email us questions that we'll get to on the second half of this chapel. All right. Here's our first question, Michelle. Okay, how did you witness to the secular scientists in your workplace? Was it mostly in action? Did you ever have to defend your faith? What was most effective? That's a great question. I would say that going into the job, I was very naive about how people would accept my great news. Mm. when I was in college, I, I had built such a wonderful foundation learning about science and God and God's creation, and I was so pumped and like ready to enter this secular world where I can yeah. be the greatest apologist within a 100-foot radius. <laughs> um, 
but, and I did, I did try to witness, I did try to share my faith, oh, I go to church, I'm learning this, oh, this is what God did. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it is really hard to say what is effective because you don't really see the fruits of your efforts or, mm. but all I can say is that the best I could have done is to live my life righteously, stand for what I believe in, not be ashamed of the gospel in any way, but share openly. Um, but not everyone was willing to, I guess, accept it or listen. There, there were times where people were just like, Michelle, you need to like shut up now because I'm trying to work yeah. or whatever. Um, I learned, you know, sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it's not because I'm in a workplace. Yeah. But I think um, just my outlook on trying to be a witness now has changed just after growing up a little bit. Okay, yeah. okay. Here's another question, okay? How did you know that the calling of acting being such a big change from what you studied in college was God leading you in that direction? I'm here now. <laughs> I just think it's crazy. I think it's crazy to be up here right now at a chapel speaking to you guys about, as an, as an actor, when I was last here studying science. I couldn't have authored this for myself. I couldn't have even dreamt it or like willed it to happen even yeah. if I wanted to. And just the fact that I've been able to experience so much just... Um, just based on the motivation that I shared earlier about wanting to practice compassion and yeah. being motivated by that, actually yeah. wanting to live out, hey, Jesus humbled himself, took our shame, yeah. died our death, and offers us dignity and worth. Mm -hmm. I can do that for somebody too. I yeah. can understand them. Yeah. And I think just like, sticking to that <laughs> motivation and really understanding it and understanding it in a different way each day, um, that makes me feel as if I'm where God wants me to be. Yeah. It's not necessarily defined by what others might perceive as success. Yeah, I mean, if I could reflect anything back to you, it seems like uh, career and calling are a little bit different for you. It seems like when you talk about calling, it's I'm a, I'm a child of God, this is who I am, mm -hmm. and that seems like what Absolutely. you're saying. And then also, sometimes the way we find our career is kind of like trial and error, and that's yeah. just kind of part of how we walk with God sometimes. Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. I totally agree. I, I think when I was in college, I thought, how can I best glorify God as a doctor? How can I best glorify God as a scientist? And I'm realizing that's, that those are all great and valid questions that we should strive to yeah. understand and seek from God. But at least for me, just having done two wildly different things, I just, I want to stay in his word and stay present and every day be faithful to him. Yeah, great. Okay, here's another question. What was the process of getting cast from taking the five acting classes? Okay. How did that happen for you? So how do you go from Groupon to Gilmore Girls kind of thing, right? All right, you guys want the inside scoop. Um, I do, that's what I'm gonna do after this. After the acting class, I just took a class once a week while I was working full time for the government. Um, and I just learned about acting for a year until after many long nights of crying and fights with my husband about changing my career. Just trying to get him on the same page and understand, like yeah. this is what I really care about now, yeah. even though you married a scientist. <laughs> um, I, he, he was always supported of, supportive of me, but you know, it took some convincing to show him like I'm, I'm not chasing a pipe dream here. Mm -hmm. um, so after I took classes for a year, I finally made the decision with my husband to quit my job, and we had saved up for a year. Mm -hmm. And I quit my job once I got an agent, and then once I had the agent, they were pitching me. I booked my first two co-star roles on Gilmore Girls and Mom, small baby roles, don't watch it. <laughs> and then um, later that year, I booked Searching. So that's, it's been two years since I shot the movie, and nothing since then, to be honest. But 
That's, I just, I got cast by just auditioning for it, just like anybody else. And I wouldn't yeah. have been chosen had I not been available to be an actor at that time. So yeah. it feels pretty special to be cast. Yeah, great. Okay, here's another question. What's one of the hardest scenarios you've been in where you had to put your faith first within the sphere of Hollywood? They ask tough questions, huh? No, it's great. My questions are so it. easy. It's so good. I love it. Okay. It's just, I guess I interpret it in a different way. Like, I don't know exactly how the question is getting at, but I'm a scientist by nature, so I'm very literal. But I guess putting my faith first, like stomping my foot on the ground, no, Jesus, I don't know. But I think, I think like, I think I have to do that on a daily basis. When mm. I consider roles. So good. When I have to audition, like am I gonna put my heart and soul into memorizing these 11 pages of a role that I don't wanna play? I don't know, I think putting my faith first just comes with, I think most difficultly, that's not even an adverb. <laughs> the hardest way I think is to put, to have integrity in giving God my best efforts. Yeah. It's really hard to wake up every morning and like, you know, grind. Um, I, I don't know, I guess I'm not too bashful about my faith. I don't, I'm not like on the buses of Los Angeles like evangelizing and proselytizing, but I am open mm -hmm. when, I just feel, I just believe and feel that others around me yeah. who don't know God need to know him and would want to. And so I'm open to sharing if the opportunity comes, but I'm not necessarily like a tyrant or anything. Yeah, great, okay. Here's another question. Do you think that these predominantly Asian movies are going to shift the stereotypes that people have of Asians or affirm them? Probably not. Just kidding, I don't know. I really can't say, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I've been asked so many questions about the movement of Asian Americans in, in entertainment. And I've only been in this industry for so short that I really, I really just don't know enough about yeah. the specific plight of those before me and what they've been fighting for and what's yeah. changed. I'm really just learning. Yeah. Um, but I would hope that Asian Americans and other um, ethnicities and races, bringing the fullness of their talents to each role, to multi-dimensional characters, and bringing who they are to the table is mo like undoubtedly going to help other people see on the screen that, hey, these are real people, they're not too different from myself. Yeah, I mean, if I could reflect something back about searching, mm -hmm. one of the cool things is that it's not necessarily Asian people that have to play these roles in, in the movie. Mm -hmm. It's like, it could, have been, it could have been anyone, but they're Asian people right. living There's something out. progressive about that, where yeah. you don't have to put ethnicity at the forefront. Yeah. You don't have to wave it around like, hey, this is an Asian movie, but it's like, hey, this is a thriller about a girl gone missing, could have happened to anyone right? without you know, bias or regards to their ethnicity, and they happen to be Asian, and it's their story. Yeah, great. Here's another question. What is God teaching you right now, okay, as you work in Hollywood? I think patience and... I think, quite honestly, right now in this moment, because of the success of the movie and just being bombarded with and blessed with followers on Instagram, um, I think I'm just feeling kind of isolated in my experience. I don't really know who to talk to about mm. what I'm going through except my mm. husband. But I think um, God is just really trying to tell me that he loves me. He's proud of me. Mm. I'm his daughter. Mm. And just remind me of these truths yeah. because it's so easy to lose sight of all that when you're being told so many things by people all around you. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, those are things that I want to hear from God too every day. Great. Here's another question. What is the hardest part of being a Christian in careers that don't have many Christians? How did you work through that hardship? 
it's fun because it's, I mean, it's different from Biola where everyone is, right? I think that's wonderful. I loved it here. Um, what was that? What's challenging about? What was challenging it? about okay. working in those two careers? I think at times it does get to you and feel isolating. Like I'm the only one. Like why am I the only one? Yeah. Like, no one believes me. But in a way, it it has grounded me and helped me stay purposeful. Yeah. Like I'm in this place, and I feel special that God's called me to this place where there really isn't much light or it feels like that. And I get to bear light in mm. this place. Yeah. Great. Here's another question. I am truly inspired by how your career path is so different from your college major. I think someone wants to change their major. <laughs> Just don't do it on family weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> that was a lot of wisdom right there. <laughs> That was good. I'm just kidding. I don't know if you should believe like 90% of the things I say. <laughs> Can you give us some advice about being in college and being afraid of what the future holds after college? I'll just tell you that that fear doesn't go away when you graduate. Mm, so good. It's true. It's so true. I don't know if I'm ever going to book another role in my life. I don't know what... I. I had nine auditions last week, which is insane for an actor. I'm super blessed, but I haven't gotten any callbacks. I don't know what's going to happen. And I think, I think what I can c encourage this person and comfort anybody who's feeling this way is it's okay that you feel fearful about the future. I, I would say just daily surrender it to God who is in control and he does know and he knows you so specifically he knows like every hair on your head he he you know he wrote this crazy story for my life and he's doing that for you and he knows you intimately that's all i can say great great well can i ask one one question with that so with that it's what was it like for you to tell your parents okay <laughs> bo as both korean americans that you don't want to go into science but you want to go into acting it's so funny i actually get this question a lot well, and I it's mean, always asian people ask me what did we, your parents we, say we get that you know we we understand what it's like in family weekend yeah it's, i'm i would say i'm incredibly blessed to come from a family that's so wonderfully diverse in their experiences. Mm -hmm. My parents were born in Korea, immigrated to Brazil, and then to the States very early on. Mm. Um, so my dad was a coffee farmer in Brazil. My mom went to Juilliard. My oh, wow. They, they are, they're like Asian forest gumps. <laughs> I don't know, like Renaissance people? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to call them, but like they've just done so many things. And my dad was in mortgage banking for many, many years, like 30 years. And they both had career switches mm. when I was in junior high. They went to seminary and they both have their PhDs at, from Fuller now. Wow. And so they're teaching, they're out in Cambodia right now. They're just doing whatever the Lord is calling them to do. And my brother, he went to USC for business school. Yeah. And he's four years older than me, so I idolized him. And um, he worked at a bank. He was an analyst, so smart. He still is. And now he changed his career to be, uh, he owns an ice cream shop. And, <laughs> and he also is the editor-in-chief of Eater LA, which is a huge oh, food publication yeah. in Los Angeles. And he has a huge following. Every chef in LA is like, Mr. King, come <laughs> dine at our restaurant. And so I think when I changed my career to acting, this is the Asian part. Because I changed my career to acting after I got married, my parents did not care. That is the Asian part. <laughs> once you, once, if you're Korean American and you get married off and you're like, I'm gonna get a tattoo. It's like, you do what you want. You're married now. So I think that is the part that people most relate to. But my parents didn't care. They were not surprised. I guess they were surprised. But I think because I'd already had a career in science, I'd proved that you know I used my degree, yeah, um, paid off some debt, and I was married was the main thing. They just did not. They were just like, well, you got a husband now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's 
Those are, those are values, right? <laughs> Things that, okay. All right, here's another question, okay? Is healthy water still a life calling for you? And if so, would you share any thoughts you have about how you might be able to empower the acting world slash Hollywood to help places like Haiti with their waterborne mm-hmm. diseases and issues? I'll say this much. Because I've been passionate about so many different things in my life, I sometimes wonder what part my past passions play in my present. Yeah. Because I've cared about being a doctor, I've cared about water, I've cared about poop, I've cared about acting, and I wonder. And the best way I can describe it right now on the fly is just education, awareness, and understanding something more deeply makes you care about it. Yeah. And in that sense, I'll always care about, I'll always be a nerd, first of all. I'll always care about sciencey things. I'll always mm-hmm. watch Grey's Anatomy if I see it on TV. Um, I'll always carry that compassion that I felt when I see someone hurting. And same with water. I had once been a freak about it and would like yell at my roommates for taking showers that were 45 minutes long or, you <laughs> know, I'd be like, time. what is well, wrong with you? You're not a Christian. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but I'd say I still care about it. If you ask my husband now, I'm, I've been an actor for three and a half years and I still, you know, care about preservation and, and I still appreciate clean, having clean water and being in a society that allows me to drink, ta- I drink LA tap water no shame at all. Um, I don't use a filter. I, I'm just grateful that I can drink water that doesn't kill me, and that's a luxury a lot of people in this world don't have. So I think that's how I like to view it, is it plays a piece in my life every day. Great, great. Well, Michelle, the last question we ask all of our guests is what are some of the biblical principles that help shape your thoughts for today? Okay. I know I'm an actor, so I was going to take on memorizing this Bible verse. Shame on me. I didn't do it. You know what? There's a lot of verses in the Bible, (laughs) so it's okay. Okay. But I'd like to read for y'all what I um, had prepared just because I don't want to miss anything. This comes from Luke 6, 34 to 36. And it is also the daily Bible verse from the Bible app today. Um, and if you lend to those from whom, sorry, I'm a slow reader, from whom you expect repayment, what, cre- what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. Mm. But love your enemies, do good to them, mm. and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. Hmm. And you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the He is kind to the ungrateful. Sorry, one second. He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked, who is like me. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. So I wrote. If I understand and believe that grace and love from God are given to me even though I never even deserved it. I can be generous. I can mm. forgive. Yeah. I can love freely. I can give of myself even at the cost of myself. I can be compassionate and I can love my neighbor. So everything that I do in my life, whether it's acting or relate to those around me, um, I can say that I try with my, the whole of my being to um, do it as Christ empowers me. Yeah. And the same spirit that gave himself um, on, the, on the cross, the same, um, God, Christ's love lives inside of me is what I'm trying to say, so I can love others too. (laughs) All right, well, let's thank Michelle for being with us today. Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.